Hi, I'm Lauren Levera, and I want to welcome you to Sinister Cinema. I still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifier 2. I bought these glasses specifically for this review uh, from a vendor at Sales from the Dark Side at Terror Trader in Arizona. So if you're ever in town, you definitely should check out that shop. Yes. Want to try these on? Yes. Um, so, uh, we got that lovely intro by Lauren Lavera, who was nice enough to record that for us when we did an interview with her about a couple weeks, a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. Uh -huh. If you guys haven't watched that, re uh, that interview, you absolutely should. She's a super, super sweet woman and she was kind enough to give us 30 minutes of her time. Um, and, uh, these glasses are hilarious. Now, Kaylee is uh, convinced that these are supposed to be yellow because uh, in the film, they look... It, it's that dress thing that Kaylee was just talking about. It, it's you, Some people see it as gold. Some people see it as whatever, blue or something. Uh -huh. um, yeah, in the film, they look, they look pink to me, but then, you know, we see other artwork of it and people see it as yellow. So, I don't know what the hell. Yeah, I'm not Do you sure. guys see that those glasses as pink or yellow in the film? I don't know. So, all right, let's jump right in because I took another two pages of notes like we did with Halloween Ends, and I sure as hell don't want this to be an hour and 45 minutes like that video yes, was. no, it will not be that long. <laughs> no, it'll be longer, right? It'll be longer. Five so, hours. Terrifier 2, we did not get a subtitle. We just got the, you know, numerical 2 instead. Um, you know, when these slasher or horror franchises get enough deep they always start <laughs> dropping numbers and start adding little cute subtitles right mm -hmm. <laughs> it always happens so we'll see if terrifier ever gets to the point where it's like terrifier you know the next coming <laughs> the next coming <laughs> yeah uh and since this is about a killer clown yeah we brought the ultimate killer clown shorty yes uh which we got to score from spirit halloween after going to 13 of them looking we for this thing all over the place and we finally found him in store so that we could use our coupon and now he lives with us forever full time yep um all right so this one picks up spoilers guys obviously spoilers. and this is getting its third week in theaters uh this weekend uh, it was only supposed to do one weekend uh, much like a Jeepers Creepers, the last two. Mm. Um, but unlike those god awful shitball films, people actually want to see more of this and demanded it to have a second and now even a third week in theater. So if you didn't yeah. catch it the first week, you didn't catch it the second week, you got a chance to see it in the third. And whenever it drops on Screenbox, I don't know. I looked it up. Couldn't find anything. She found something that said it was streaming there. Now, it is not. Yeah, I don't so know. So, <laughs> if for some reason you saw that, it's not true. I even went to Screenbox to confirm it ain't on there. Nor does it have any release for uh, it to uh, be, you know, released. I, I, I have no idea when this damn thing's coming out. Yeah. Um, go see it in theaters. But yeah, go see yes. it in theaters. Yes. Uh, and pass out and throw up like a bunch of people are <laughs> right. reportedly doing. I'm very Is that true? Is that like a true thing that's it's, really happening? Is I mean, that's good and bad for publicity. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, it's, it's I think it's mostly bothering. good, right? Because you have people passing out in the theaters during the Exorcist right. and whatever, right? It just makes it seem super extreme, which it definitely is an extreme film for for mainstream for audiences. Mainstream a audiences. thousand percent. Yeah, a yeah. thousand percent. So I genuinely am baffled that someone would like faint and vomit well because it just but, feels like by the time you got like you would leave before you were like passing out although i, I don't know because if something just you know if it happens and you're not expecting it i guess what kind of right? film were these people expecting i don't know did they just <laughs> skip terrifier one or did they not realize that this was some unrated slash-a-thon yeah like are these actual like horror fans that were there for the gore and they still vomited and passed out i can't i can't imagine that's the case this has to just be unsuspecting people that buy a ticket randomly and uh are just caught totally off guard 
I'm so desensitized to violence and gore at this point. Like these films, they're just like fun and funny to me. I, I don't see, I don't know. I, I could not genuinely imagine, but I am desensitized. So mm. it's, it is what it is. I, I just, I can't wrap my head around that people are actually doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. <laughs> but okay. Anyway. Um, so we've got the opening here that takes place right after the events of the first film. Mm -hmm. He's still attacking the coroner. He crushes his face. He takes out his eye. He puts it into his eye. Now, we did not rewatch Terrifier 1 like I had intended to do mm -hmm. the ending to see why Art's missing his eye and then why it's back after this scene. It just grew back, and I don't remember why his eye is missing. We must something must have happened to it. I completely forgot. It's it's been a little while yeah. since we watched Terrifier one. I thought he just shot himself through the mouth and out the back of the head. Uh huh. Um, because yeah, the cops don't shoot him or anything. Maybe, uh, maybe Victoria or Vicky stabs him, stabs him in the eye. I, I, I do have not no remember no memory this. of that, so that sucks. But yeah, after he like He must. Puts... Why would it be why would it be missing if, oh, it, totally. if it wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that we're just like forgetting it. But when he puts like the eye in and it's just like See what's what's really cool about art is that and I was talking to you about this during our rewatch of this that he's super playful most of the time when he's like yeah. antagonizing people. And hurting them but then occasionally he gets really angry yeah and it's definitely scary to see because like he's psychotic no matter what yeah. but the switch from the playfulness to the you know rage is um and is is scary i've definitely like hmm i don't know if art's more like what art you'd rather be killed by whether it's the angry one i can tell you this he does a kill in this movie, right, at, on Allie, and she seems to have pissed him off yeah. by not giving him candy and giving him a hard time, and then she kind of throws the candy at him and whatever. Like, that kill is so above and beyond the rest, right? Like, oh my don't get me wrong. The dude, the coroner gets his head bashed in and, and his eye taken out and, and, you know, all that stuff. Um, and a lot of these are mean spirited, mm -hmm. but Allie's feels like extra, extra mean spirited. <laughs> yes. And it's like, what did Allie do to him <laughs> that made him so angry? Like Damien has an ex-girlfriend named Allie <laughs> or his mom's name. If he hates her, I don't know. I don't know any about his relationships with oh, his mom man. or somebody, but it's, Somebody pissed him off named Allie or Allison or something. <laughs> and he brutalized her on film because this is just, there's something with this kill where I'm like, okay, this one is really, really going for broke. Oh man. It's so intense and it's, it's great. Honestly, like, I, I mean, I, I love the gore in this film for sure. I think that for most people, right, that's the highlight. Um, you yeah. know, and it, it is wonderful to see like practical effects gore the way it's done here. Um, but I, I think that like, so she doesn't give him the candy. Well, then she begrudgingly does when she throws it at him. And later when he is uh, serving the trick or treaters out of her mom's carved out head bowl, <laughs> uh, he kind of, you know, he bats away one of the kids who tries to reach for another piece. He's so like mad. Yes. So I think that there is something to do with like, you know, obviously Halloween and these rules that he has, um, just like maybe around it. Uh, so because she is not in the spirit of Halloween giving him candy freely, you know, that is what kind of sets him off to, although I think he would have killed her no matter what, 100%. of course, but like the level that is shown, I think is because, yeah, she definitely made him upset. Now this, I mean... Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We kind of jumped. No, but. I know, but I was going to get into the whole Sienna thing. Mm. Um, but let's save that for now. Um, I do like that he loads up his bag full of goodies, like a fucked up Santa Claus or something. Mm -hmm. You know, he's throwing in uh, acid, which, of course, he throws in Brooke's face later. Um, and 
you know, he's just grabbing tools randomly and just mm-hmm. throwing them in this trash bag and he carries them over his shoulder just to brutalize people with them later. So I, I do like that he has a, a collection bag of goodies yeah. for later. Um, and then the laundromat scene oh my God. is is really funny yes. um, just to see like him actually go and clean himself up because... You know, one of the things, and and typically this is done because it takes the scare out of it. Now, personally, I don't find anything about this film scary. I think that Mm -hmm. Art and the Pale Girl, as she's uh, called in the in the uh, credits. Now, her name might be on that that flyer Mm because you know she's the girl who was was mutilated at the carnival. I'm sure that if I got a Blu-ray and I looked in it, we could probably find her actual name, but she's the pale girl. Um, you know, she uh, has some creepy moments for sure. And he has some moments where he's like creepy and he's standing there. So it can feel creepy and he can be scary and the situation can be scary. But I never feel like at any point this movie is actually like achieving a, a level of like fright mm. or an atmosphere of like fear like this film, this film always comes off as like campy, playful, fun, throw like ridiculous, uh, you know, humor to me. I, I never, I never take this film seriously in any way, shape, or form. I personally, I, I actually find that there are some genuinely scary shots, and most of them are with Art and the Pale Girl. But I was sure. pretty freaked out by her. Although I agree that I think that like I think the majority of the film is pretty campy and fun in that way, and this scene, the laundromat scene in particular, it is really funny um, in a very fucked up way. But just like Art's expression when he like sees her and just like the deadpan, I don't know. There's something about the mannerisms and everything there that is just very comedic. And then of course like she's. shitting I think is what we decided she was doing shitting herself (laughs) so it's like really gross but yeah their reactions to each other is is definitely um, humorous now when it comes to the pale girl I'm not really sure I can figure out and I don't think anyone uh, is meant to figure any of this stuff out Uh, you can have your uh, theories and whatnot, but with the pale girl, it's kind of just like she appears to him and she seems to be this victim of the past who is now um, like this vessel for not only evil, but also is kind of like his anchor mm-hmm. to the real world mm-hmm. because I'm only speculating here, but she seems to be the answer for how art was brought back in the morgue, right? She has these eyes that light up and she seems to be able to not only like manipulate people or mimic people or uh, possess people or whatever she's doing, but she also seems to have a power in her. Um, And I think this is, Art's first time ever seeing her, right? The way he looks at her, it's like, who the hell is this? Um, and when she smiles at him and all this, and it, and, it, and and we do see the guy in the laundromat doesn't see her, yes. right? But Sienna and Jonathan do. Mm-hmm. Now, what their connection to Art and all that is, I have no idea. I know the dad had a brain tumor. He was having visions. He was drawing this warrior Valkyrie girl that Sienna becomes. And, you know she's connected to him in some way and and it has to be this like Marvel-esque showdown in a specific place uh, with a specific weapon and all this stuff, which I personally find to be absolutely ludicrous and and pretty (laughs) stupid to be honest. Um, The knife, like when it comes to life, that that's some fucking Jason goes to hell shit. (laughs) That's like, you know, the uh, Kandarian dagger from Jason goes to hell that like, you know, when it's thrown into her hand, it becomes this thing uh-huh. that can kill Jason because it's like she's his bloodline and only right. it's this like total jumping of the shark 
And I, and I was laughing because, you know, I was talking to Kaylee about this, like how much controversy there is over Halloween ends right now and how much they jumped the shark from the franchise. And then we're watching this and I'm like, could you imagine if in Halloween ends, like there was some glowing knife that this girl picked (laughs) up in a dream and like killed Michael with. Sure. And then Michael was like born through the birth canal of one of his victims. Like that is straight up. Jason goes to hell. Yeah. Like she Jason is reborn through his kin yeah in the basement and there is a dagger that's like prophesized to be able to kill him this is Jason goes to hell shit <laughs> and people hate that movie yeah. people hate halloween ends cuz they think it's way too ridiculous and and and, and jarring and and disrespectful and whatever uh-huh. but like the the majority uh, praise the shit out of this film and I'm not saying they shouldn't and I'm fine with it but I do find that stuff to be ridiculous and silly and I don't care it's a silly film yeah. I would not taking it seriously anyway but it's just it's interesting to me and maybe that's just it right it's the tone I was just gonna say right. I think that that's the biggest difference is that the you know Terrifier 2 is as we've been saying a little bit more campy and more of like a slash-a-thon but you know I think there is obviously an effort to make the lore of Art the, Cr- Art the Clown like expand which sure. I like you know I think that that's you know the other part um, of this movie that I really enjoyed besides the gore and other things, but I like that the lore is expanding and that we're getting these other characters. And as far as like who the pale girl is to him, I mean, it is all speculation. I, you know, there's a scene later on in the film when Sienna's mom um, appears to her after her death and Jonathan is like, that's not mom. And she has like, it's the actress that is her mom, but she has the pale girl's hair and everything, so I'm not sure if that is the the pale girl the pale imitating girl. her or yes. if it is the mom. No, because I was the, I was thinking the mom doesn't though, have a face. I know, but I was thinking that like her because spirit. the pale yeah because the pale girl is a past victim of arts that maybe the victims that he kills are able to like that they you know essentially become like demons as well. And I think that with how you know Vicky is obviously in this movie, like she's on his side you know like she's part of the gang so to speak so the reason i definitely think it's the pale girl and not the mom is because of the design of how she looks well that's it would be too lazy Mm -hmm. to have another being that's come back from the dead as one of art's you know accomplices now Mm -hmm. um to look exactly like the pale girl like every female that comes back is gonna have that same hairstyle no i I think you're probably right especially because she already imitates jonathan's voice and i think that that's likely the case but it just makes me think like maybe this is something that could potentially happen and i also i mean i know we're i don't want to jump to the end because i i'm curious about well like you know sienna (laughs) she gets stabbed with the knife and then she gets resurrected and I'm wondering, because she's like, you know, she's in hell. She's at the Clown Cafe. And I just, I'm very curious if there's going to be something, you know, if that character returns, if she's changed in some way. Um, not for the not for the better. Like, maybe there's a bit of evil in her kind of a thing. Mm. Um, so, you know, aside from all the, the trauma, obviously, <laughs> that would exist as well. Sure, I mean, when Damien was doing this movie, right, like, he's going to sit down and he's going to be like, all right, I don't want to just do the first movie again, but with, like, more kills. That's just boring, right? Like, that's boring as a filmmaker. So, of course, he's going to expand the lore. He's going to push it. This is what I was talking about in the Halloween Ends review. It's like, when filmmakers are tasked with making multiple films in a franchise, they don't want to be boxed in to what people have immediately made as as um, the confines of that franchise, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like, oh well, Michael only does this 
Michael can only ever do this. It's like, says fucking who? Mm -hmm. Like, really? You, you just, like, people get these very narrow, myopic views of franchises and, and they write their own headcanon and it's like, it has to stick to these specific things. That's why sequels are so hard mm -hmm. because people get so obsessed with like, this is how I think it is. And if it doesn't fit these things, and then there becomes kind of like this unwritten rule of certain things where it's like, well, they can't ever talk or they can't ever do this. And it's like, why? Because mm -hmm. they never did before. So that what? That's so limiting and it's yeah. so silly to me. So when, when I'm sure when, you know, when he sat down and wrote this, it's like, well, art just walking around on Halloween, killing people again. How boring. Yeah. Right. We already did that movie. Right. I'm not just going to make the same damn movie. So I'm going to really amp this up. I'm going to throw things and I'm going to have fun with writing it. I'm sure he had a blast doing it. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just want to talk about that stuff because, man, I, 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 I shudder to ever think about writing a sequel and actually <laughs> putting it out in the world because people are absolutely ridiculous <laughs> with what they want. I don't yeah. even think they know what shit they want. <laughs> that's, um, yeah, that's true. We get a cosplay assembly um, over the credits, which typically I don't like. Um, credits? Opening credits? Oh. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I kind of find them to be annoying. And mm -hmm. it's like, let's just get to it. Some people mm -hmm. heavily disagree with that and they love them. And they want them to remain forever and they want them to come back because some films just outright ignore them. Uh -huh. But like if I was watching Lord of the Rings and we got like a five, like a three minute long like credits mm -hmm. sequence of just like black screens and whatever and just kind of cutting to Hobbiton or the Shire or whatever <laughs> so like, just in between. <laughs> yeah. Like Elijah Wood and then it would like show a little bit of here and oh god. <laughs> no. I'm so glad there's nothing there. But I actually like these. I like the music. I like the setup. Um, it could have been fine just that with her assembly without the names on the screen. Right? I, like, yeah. I don't care. I don't really have a preference at all about opening credits. Oh I do. I, I mean, maybe I do, but I, I just, do. Oh. I think I would have to, it would be like, a, I hate them kind of a thing, but it would, it would be a case by case basis. Something has to be going on in them. That's all I ask. Mm. Just blank black screen with names and nothing else. That's like how they, uh, that's awful. The, uh, old like universal yes. monster movies all start out. They're not black screen. They're like, you know, there's some music and they just kind of yeah. flash cards of people's names. And everything. And like, it's like, dude, I'm going to see these names at the end. I don't <laughs> care. Let's move on. So as long as you're presenting something during the credits, I can, I can deal with them. So, but we get somebody making a costume here, uh, Sienna, yeah. uh, making a costume here, which is cool. Uh, because this is her bat suit. This is, yeah. you know, her armor that she's going to put on in the end of the film to battle art, which is, once again, ludicrous. And it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there's... So, okay, also, I want to say that I love the music um, in this. I, I feel like it gives a really cool 80s vibe, which I'm super into, and I just thought it was very well done and like atmospheric and I, I quite enjoyed it but also I mean there is clearly some connection between Sienna and Art and her father and if we you know can get more information in the future maybe about sure. her dad and what was going on with him but clearly there is something there and I mean yeah does it need to be the specific outfit probably I mean probably not but well, because he saw, there's a it's he saw the future yes so she was yeah. always going to wear that outfit yeah. right yeah, she was some destined type of like, mm -hmm. to make that outfit and wear that outfit and defeat him yeah. wearing that outfit, right? Sure. Like, yeah, she never had a choice. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that her dad killed himself? Or do you think Art killed him? I mean, I have to assume that Art had some type of an influence on his death. Uh, perhaps he was trying to kill Art, you know, Maybe. and ended up killing himself, but... I don't know. We have Jonathan here talking about dressing up as Art the Clown. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm guessing this is just his connection to him because of his father, right? Because it doesn't really come into the film much other, much else. Yeah, I, I think that he's, you know... His mom his... just says no, and he's like, that sucks. And then that's kind of that for him and Art. 
<laughs> he has his, his dad's sketchbook, right? And he has that picture of Art in there. Sure. And so he knows that his dad is, you know, was following Art the Clown or knew about him. So, and of course, you know, his sister is making this outfit for a character that, you know, their dad designed for her. Yeah. So I think he feels like, you know, he wants something to connect him to his father as well. I think it's funny that, you know, Sienna is talking about dressing up as an actual serial killer for Halloween, which I, for the record, I think is really fucked up and you shouldn't really do. Really messed up. Um, but it was funny because she was like, it would be like dressing up like Jeffrey Dahmer. And I'm like laughing in my head like, oh, oh you no. wait. You wait. People, in a couple weeks, yeah. you're going to have a lot of Jeffrey Dahmers. You're going to get Eddie Munson. And Jeffrey, and Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer. That's going to be the two main male costumes this year, guaranteed. You know, I already see, I see tons of, like, TikToks of, like, Dahmer lookalikes. Like, people just out in public that are, like, you know, they find someone that looks like Jeffrey Dahmer. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We'll see. You just you just watch. When you go out, you're going to be pointing them all. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, Jason told me this was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, they are. So, Sienna goes to sleep. Watching a commercial for the Clown Cafe. Now, Sienna is on Xanax. Mm -hmm. Sienna's mind is not to be trusted. She's kind of an unreliable narrator of sorts. But she goes to bed watching this commercial. Whether that commercial is actually on the TV or not, I don't know. But she goes into the commercial in her dream. And uh, she is in the Clown Cafe. Um, <clears throat> now, what this is representative of. What this is symbolic of. Hell, you said. I, I, I don't mean, know. The, yeah. This is where Art is is from. He's a demon that was brought up to Earth, and she's a an angel, right? Like, cause there's a lot right. of angel imagery with her. Yeah. Right. She got the wings, right? She's got the 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 light shining down on her in the darkness. Um, she's resurrected. Mm -hmm. Like, you got a lot of that kind of stuff going on in here. So uh, she has to go down into hell, resurrect herself to climb up out of the pits of hell to, to vanquish this demon that's art uh i i guess um i did like that the cereal the art cereal art crispies yeah art crispies uh the marshmallow pieces inside is the sawed in half girl from part one so that that, that was really cute that is cool um we've got art with a tommy gun because art likes guns um, which this, yet again, uh, I like to point out because when I said that Terminator is a slasher movie, people are like, slashers uh, never use guns. <laughs> now we have Art the Clown to be like... So is this not a fucking... <laughs> is this not a slasher? Is this not a slasher then? <laughs> it is. Art uses guns a lot. Yes. So is he not lot, a slasher? A lot, a lot. Stupid ass people. I got so many of those comments in my in my Terminator review. I'm like, bro, this is a slasher, a thousand percent. Yeah, no, I I totally agree with you. I I love this whole sequence. I think it's actually probably one of my favorites, if not, actually, yeah, it is my favorite in the yeah. whole movie. Mm -hmm. I love the creepy, surreal, like just the nightmare quality, yes. and like even this time watching, I'm like, who are all these people? Like they're on the set of a Past commercial. Victims. Yeah. yeah. It's like they're on the set of a commercial and you have the people that are in the commercial and the people behind scenes, but then it also feels like there's actual customers for the Clown Cafe. And I just, I think it's so cool. I love the color scheme on everybody, the the primary colors that they have going on. And of course, Sienna's like the Pippi Long stockings, like her entire outfit here, I just think is so adorable. And it's just scary. This is another scene that I think for me, like, it, it's scary. Like, it is pretty, you know, it's horror for sure, but... Sure, um, it's horror. Yeah, I just, I found it very unsettling, and especially the ending when the lady that's singing gets lit on fire and is just, like, still dancing while she's ablaze. That stuff is... Yeah, it's definitely some really great visuals. The ukulele girl on fire dancing around while, while you know, still on fire is definitely, like probably my favorite image of the entire film mm -hmm. um there's something about it, it it's it's kooky mm -hmm. and it's you know um off-putting mm -hmm. um Very. And, and and honestly like when they get that shot of her and she's kind of going back and forth on fire 
that would be really one of the only moments of the film for me that actually felt like like true horror Mm. like even though i'm not saying this film isn't horror of course it is it's all that it is yeah fantasy is the only other thing i could say this film is um so don't get me wrong there of course the film is horror um it's just the tone of the film and the way things are being presented the the difference between like art the clown and like michael myers in the first Mm. you know halloween in 78 like such a different animal yeah so, the lurking in the shadows is coming into the light you know uh, that's actual true terror scare type stuff art is always out in the light he's always like having a good time he's laughing <laughs> like the film feels playful yeah the, it, it never feels scary to me it doesn't have that atmosphere it doesn't have the fear in atmosphere. Yeah, but it's it's definitely yeah, it's definitely a personal thing because I I could a thousand percent see people being completely terrified of this whole movie. Sure, you know of both movies. People are terrified of the television. Clown, yeah, but I mean, yeah, clowns <laughs> alone, right? Like anytime you put clowns on screen, there's always going to be a subset of people that you know they have that phobia, and this just strikes a chord with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this I. This is just a wonderful scene. It's, it's so good. We also find out that this movie is taking place at the same time as the beginning and yeah. end. Uh, well, not should say the end, but the beginning of the first film, mm-hmm. which, of course, we find out later that that's Vicky as has survived mm-hmm. and is in, being interviewed. And uh, we see that this interview is taking place on the television. And then we also hear uh, their Sienna's friends talking about it, um, Allie and Brooke the next day um, that she was attacked. Mm-hmm. And then Brooke makes this comment of like, oh my God, you know, could you imagine living like that? Very similar, of course, mm-hmm. to the way the uh, interviewer yeah. was talking about Vicky. Here now, you know, irony once again, she gets a uh, jar of acid thrown in her face, oh. which unfortunately... <laughs> really happens um in some countries around this world where guys that's like a popular i shouldn't say popular but that's something that that men do to women it's insane oh my god just to think like when i saw that i was like oh god that actually happens yeah like that actually happens in the world beyond messed up (laughs) beyond beyond It's it's crazy yes um and yeah, as I said, Art's eye is just back. So he just regenerates. And uh-huh. the back of his head is healed. Uh-huh. Right? So he just... And his costume healed, too. Yeah. Because there's no hole in the back yep. of his thing. So I don't know. I, I have no I have no explanation for any of this. <laughs> um, it would have been cool had his... I, I have to get whatever recipe or whatever detergent that he used to get all those blood stains out of his clothes oh my god i don't know what he used so great i don't know what he googled but uh so clean so pristine yeah he did a damn good job yeah of uh getting the blood stains out of his clothes Um, so good for him uh i'm sure they smelled uh downy fresh uh we get felissa rose in here for like a minute from of course uh sleepaway camp Mm -hmm. so it's cool to see her she's a doll if you've ever met her at a con you know she is the sweetheart of the con world um and yeah as i said jonathan and sienna can both see the pale girl yeah um from what i can tell she's they seem to be the only ones who can which means that they're linked now why they're linked Maybe we'll find out in part three. You never know. But if you explain it too much, people will get pissed off. So <laughs> you can't win. Um, and we've got good old Anthony LaRusso here from Cobra Kai. Oh my as soon as I saw him, I was like, that's Anthony LaRusso. And I'm yes. like, it can't be. Like, why would he be in this? We thought but that it sure as hell instantly is. when we saw him the first watch. And then, yeah. Yeah. confirmed so that's cool yeah he's he's one of his shithead friends who <laughs> uh for some reason they, they think showing a dead opossum to like this girl in their class is what gonna get them like in with her i like, don't that's, know that's, i don't know that's weird that. flirting 
very weird flirting. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> Bad flirting. Because they seem to be friends with her, to uh-huh. a degree. Like, she's like, oh, hey, what? And she comes over. They're just screwing with her. But um, she seems super cute. And I would think that one of them would be, like, interested in her. But uh, they they blew their chances. Yeah. <laughs> it blew their chances. Yeah. Um, I like when Art is, like, standing in the doorway and just, like, blocking Sienna's path. Mm-hmm. And she has to, like, kind of slowly creep by him. And I also like mm-hmm. the shift of Sienna in this from mm-hmm. being, like, you know, she even calls herself out, like, oh, I had a panic attack earlier in, in class. And, like, when she sees Art in this uh, abracadabra, uh, wasn't that what it's called? Yeah, abracadabra. Abracadabra costume magic store or whatever the yeah, hell yeah in new york you looked it up I, it's yeah, a real I place can tell it's a real place mm-hmm. yeah in new york city so so yeah she seems to be kind of like cowering and like afraid but then of course in the end she she gets her strength mm-hmm. um and uh yeah I, I do like after she leaves and art's done all of his like antagonizing and he goes up and he kills this uh, cashier guy um you like Cuts his head off, which looks so fake, but I love it, right? (laughs) I love it, too. (laughs) The gore in this is, it it is, it's that, like, real, like, in-between realistic and unrealistic. Um, Just fun. Yeah, I'm so there for that kind of gore, though. Yes. It's, I love the, it's just very visceral, you know? Now, would Damien, if he's watching, let us know, uh, would Damien have, uh, went for more realistic gore if they could afford it mm. and is, is this an is this a, an artistic choice to mm. keep it looking like this um or did you or is it a budget thing right yeah like i don't I'm know curious. would you want it more realistic looking look kind of like you know in the 2013 elijah wood maniac oh my God. where the gore <laughs> looks so real yeah. or like in You've never seen this, but uh, they recreate a kill from uh, Bone Tomahawk. Mm, Um, I don't know if Damien saw that or if it's just super similar. But, I mean, the one that Damien does in Terrifier, because he has a limited budget, looks, you know, it looks fun. It looks ridiculous, right? It doesn't look real, but it looks real enough. And Mm -hmm. it's that playful gore. But the one in Bone Tomahawk. That is straight up, they, they killed a homeless person. Oh my god! They like just got someone off the street and just sawed them in half. Like from the crotch down. It's insane. It's so insane to watch. Or like the the mauling scene in uh, Backcountry. Mm. The bear mauling scene in that. It's like, that is a real body <laughs> being torn apart by a bear. You're, you're just like looking at it like, how is that not real? Mm-hmm. Right? So like... Did they not have the money to get it that real? Or would he not want it that real? Mm-hmm. Because if it was that real, imagine oh, the alley scene. My God. But it was like 100% legit looking. That would be rough to watch, you know? Like, it would be... It's already a really, really intense scene. Sure. You know? And like we've been saying, like, mainstream audiences, like, they can't really differentiate what we're talking about when we say, like this fun campy gore compared to like an ultra realistic like this to them is still just as bad sure so yeah i mean i would imagine that it's really hard to get you know um you know theater releases if it was like that's a real body <laughs> it would be wild yeah i uh, love the scene where he brings her her purse me too her bag and great. slams it down and goes over and starts you know looking at the the glasses and all that that's that's stuff so. yeah um but when he stands in the doorway and pretends to be like a prop in the store and the kid sees him great mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. Uh, we already talked about the 10 year old girl who was mutilated at the carnival obviously as the pale girl we'll look closer to see if we can find out a name but if you guys have already done so let us know um and uh i would love to see that um we talked about all that uh i love how sienna points out to the mom that if jonathan is caught like screwing around with dead animals that that's like the final warning sign Mm -hmm. in that very day he uh, she gets called in from school and is like uh he's been fucking with dead animals yep so i thought that that was pretty funny uh (laughs) i love to see art out trick-or-treating he's so playful and childish although um i guess pale girl couldn't have been seen but it would have been great if she was there trick-or-treating with him. Yes. But because no one else can see him, from what we can tell, uh, she was not there. 
Um, now, what amount of possessive qualities does she have? Can she take possession of anybody or just people who are dead or are like incapacitated? Um, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, Sienna is hearing the television talk to her in a moment, which yeah. is really odd. Well, um, it's just that like, you know, the reality breaking yeah. uh, quality that art seems to have. Um, Allie seeing art broken into her house. I get it. She's, she's, uh, frozen with fear, but man, run, call the police, oh get the hell out of the house. What you doing? You're just standing there for like so long. He's over there making himself a sandwich, brewing up some coffee, sitting down, putting a puzzle together. And she's just still standing there. I'm like, yeah. get the hell bitch, get out the room. You know, one thing I kind of, I, I, I noticed, um, is that it sort of seems like art, like when people first see him, they have these moments and not even like see him only for the first time. I mean, like whenever they encounter him again, because I, I noticed it a lot with Jonathan where they kind of, it seemed like he went mute a few times. Like they're just like, they're not screaming. They're not reacting like that, but they're still like totally scared and petrified. Sure. But I thought that was interesting, obviously, because art doesn't speak, you know, and then the reactions of these people, Um, these various characters you know not uh making a noise was uh was just interesting to me yeah Mm -hmm. um okay so here's a list i made of what is all done to Allie. uh no so my favorite part and my favorite kill gore scene she's not even dead though um (laughs) but we'll say my favorite uh gore moment is when he slices her across the eyeball. Oh my god, Just me the too. Start. Yes. It looks that actually looks pretty realistic. Oh yeah. I will it's, say. It's good. Uh, it's that's really good. to me the most convincing gore in the film. Um it's not a hundred percent realistic, but it's damn close. It is wild. So I love that. Truly, it cuts her yeah. right through the face and through the eye and her eye completely um, is severed yeah. uh, right down the middle. That shit's wild. So, cuts her through the eye and the face. Then he scalps her slowly. Mm-hmm. Then he like stabs and skins her back. Then he breaks her arm and tears it off. Yeah. Then he rips her hand apart between oh both these fingers, which has been like a, a thing, thing this year. I know. This has happened. I'm not going to say in what movies in case you haven't That's seen them. But this has happened in a bunch of movies we've yeah. watched this year. I don't know what's up with these two fingers and these two fingers and right down the center and and people's like hands <laughs> like falling apart on both sides. Yeah. It's been a big thing it in 2022. Has. It really has. I didn't even think about it until right now as I was I saying it. But I was like, wait, we just saw this. Yes. And we saw this earlier this year. Yes. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell? Why is this such a thing this year? I don't know, but it's effective. <laughs> Live long it would and prosper. Hurt so this bad. is this is die slow and and never prosper <laughs> now. Die slow and suffer. <laughs> <laughs> that is that that's definitely not, um, you know, the uh, Vulcan way. For the sure. Vulcan way. Yeah, he's got that Vulcan d- uh, nerve pinch going on here. <laughs> um, and let's see. Uh, and then she is somehow still alive. Mm-hmm. And he comes in and pours bleach on her and oh. then rubs salt in her wounds and then rips her face off. Then we go away for a little while. <laughs> we cut man. to yet again Night of the Living Dead. They're the coming to get the times. Barbara. It's it's public in domain. Every That's movie, why. it's crazy. I get yes. it. I get it. But there's so many films I that know. are in public domain to choose I from. Know. But it's become like a thing now. They're like, well, they watched it in Halloween two back in eighty one, and now we're gonna put it in every freaking movie. It's it. We've been pointing it out. This has become a thing. Yeah. We're it's like, like, hey. It's like, oh, there's Night of the Living Barbara, Dead. Yet again. Who I hate. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, but we go away from from her for a minute. And then we come back and the mom comes in the house. She goes upstairs. She goes into her daughter's bedroom after seeing the windows broken and everything. And she walks through the door. And he is sitting there and carving up this girl's body. She has like 
barely any flesh on her legs. Oh my She's God. down to the bone. He's cutting her skin off of her chest. He's, you know, playing with her. The mom's screaming. He's laughing at her. He's like, you know, showing her his artwork. Uh-huh. Right? Literally. Yes. That's good. <laughs> and then when she, you know, shows us that she is still alive. This oh girl my God. will not die. So, like, this is... But then is... when she says, oh. mom, like... That, the close-up of the mom and her face, that shit is amazing. It's so good. Yeah. And this is definitely one of those things where I'm like, there's no way. Like, you would pass out after a certain point of, like, oh, being be mutilated. Dead so long If ago. you didn't die, at least, right? Like, you would just go unconscious. But, you know, obviously, for the sake of the movie, that's not what happens. And I do think that, you know, there is some supernatural element where he can keep people kind of in this state longer than you would normally be. So, sure, I mean, an, yeah. maybe it's even possible that the pale girl is like puppeting her. Oh my right? god! Just to like antagonize the mom more to see her daughter in such a, you know, uh, mutilated state. Yeah, sure. That for her to still think she's even alive just adds even more trauma yeah. to her in the moment before she is eventually decapitated and her head is hollowed out to become a serving tray for candy uh-huh. to kill children. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no way she'd still be alive. No. This almost kind of reminds me of, um, LG in Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre 2. Oh, well, When Stretch goes down and she finds him, his face has been cut off and he's been like, all this shit's been taken out and it's like, this dude is not still alive. <laughs> LG. This is, uh, she must be, she, maybe she's related. Maybe she's part of the LG family. No, you know, what? He's, he's, she's probably related to um, from Sorority House Massacre. To oh my God, that. Orville Ketchum! Yes, Orville Ketchum. That guy will never yes. die. <laughs> Along with Cobra Kai, <laughs> neither will ever die. Um, all right, and uh, at the little Halloween party that Sienna's at. The boyfriend of Brooke is wearing a Bob costume, yep. which is wonderful. And mm-hmm. one day I absolutely need to wear that. It's one of the most simple costumes of all time, but definitely one that always makes me happy. Yes, me uh, I will say that Sienna's mom did not come off as awful this time around. Yeah. I actually kind of felt sympathetic for her. Mm-hmm. And while I think that she might need to calm down a bit... <laughs> I totally get her. Her husband died. She's trying to deal with her kids and she's trying to pull it together. Um, I still think she might go a little overboard, but hey, you know, she lost her partner. It's tough times. Yeah. Her kids are, you know, one of her kids is showing signs of being a serial killer. She got a lot on her plate. I felt the same way. I was Especially mashed potatoes. Oh my She's definitely got a lot of mashed potatoes on her plate, but Art's there to help. I felt the same way about her, though, this time where I was, uh, as you did, that I wasn't as annoyed with her. Uh, because the first time I was like, oh my god, she's, you know, not, she's just, it was very unlikable to me. But this time, yeah, much more sympathetic, so. Yeah. Um, and she, uh, Maniac style, the original Joe Spinell Maniac, gets her head blown right the fuck off, just like Tom Savini's character. And uh, then he, Art puts her back together again like Humpty Dumpty although Humpty Dumpty Um. couldn't be put back together Uh, (laughs) but she looks about as good as Humpty Humpty Dumpty probably did after all the king's horses and all the king's men Uh, how did horses try to put Humpty Dumpty back together? They were like with their hooves like they probably helped all the king's horses and all the king's men tried to put Humpty Dumpty again back together again right that's the actual line yeah and we've never questioned why horses were putting them back together oh. maybe they couldn't put them back together because like every time that like men kind of had them back together horses would just like, <laughs> <laughs> and be like can you not help you're not helping you're a horse they wanted to help hey they wanted hay. They wanted to help. They need hay. hay. Yeah, hay. Yeah. That was stupid. But the, the, <laughs> the hooves, the hooves coming down, you know, they're not known for their arti- let's articulate yeah, they, movements. They don't have fingers in case no. you didn't know that horses have hooves. Do you imagine though? Horses no, like I can't running imagine. on hands I can't or imagine feet, them just four feet, like human stop. feet on their stop. legs. It would look no. so funny. <laughs> No, <laughs> but funny. even like horses with human feet, 
they wouldn't be much help. Like imagine your feet trying to put an egg back together. We're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old sinister cinema going off on freaking random rants. <laughs> Um, yeah, her being put back at the kitchen table with her head blown off and Art's uh, smashing, smashing mashed potatoes down her throat. Pretty funny. Yes. Um, well, yeah. The pale girl is literally able to teleport in this. Uh, mm -hmm. Sienna sees her at the nightclub and then she is back at Sienna's house to antagonize uh, Jonathan like a minute later. Mm -hmm. So she literally is like teleporting. So she is not... Um, of this world at all, for sure. Um, and we also have something. What was I going to talk about? Oh, okay. So, uh, Brooke is a piece of shit. Brooke <laughs> is seriously the worst character in this movie. And that's not saying anything bad about the actress. She does good. Yeah, she does. Uh, but her character is a dreadful person in so <laughs> many ways. Um, yeah drugging your friend without her knowledge and then getting mad at her when she like has a bad trip and then you're like also you know bitching her out and then you find out that she was taking Xanax and she's like well I didn't know you were on Xanax and it's like yeah and that's the problem that's why you right? don't you can't drug, drug people, people because right? you don't know what medications they're on a and b you just don't you just don't do that as A. You just don't do that as A. And then B is the medication thing, yeah. Yeah, but A is you don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, no, that's insane. Even if you're like super good friends with them and you're just trying to help them let loose. Sure. Even if you guys have done drugs a thousand times together and whatever. But especially, especially if there's someone who doesn't do drugs with you and they don't do drugs. That's like one of my biggest fears is someone's going to drug me. And be like, oh, you're welcome. And I'm like, like yeah. no! That's like freaking, you know, brutalize them like Allie. And I'm like, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but of course, Allie takes being drugged well because she's on drugs. But then when she starts to sober up, she... Sienna takes... What did I say? You said Allie. Oh, sorry. Allie wishes she Allie's, was on drugs, yeah, probably, Allie so she true. couldn't feel anything, but... Uh, yeah, Sienna is... Uh, yeah, she's like happy-go-lucky because she's high. Sure. And then she's, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, um, she's pissed off. Yeah. As, as you would expect. Yeah, totally. Right? And she should be because that's insane. And her friend is being a bitch about it. And then when she runs off into a um, dark area by herself uh, to look for her brother, her friend decides to just bitch at her and then decides to stay in the car and like make out with her boyfriend and do drugs and do drugs. do drugs and then she kind of feels bad about it last minute as they're about to have sex and it's like wait a minute maybe i should go bro no it's too late you're the <laughs> yeah. worst i'm so glad you died um and let's see you can say something. I'm just, I'm just looking through the well, notes. Well, no, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm letting you kind of work your way through because we jumped a little all over the place in the beginning. Um, I really like the carnival. The terrifier um, haunt. The terrifier haunt. I think that that shot in particular of the of the terrifier uh, outside, I really love that. And then, yeah, once we go in and there's like this giant clown animatronic that's like mouth is huge and bloodied and that's actually really scary. Like I would be afraid to see that. <laughs> In real life. Um, and I like that both Sienna and Jonathan have to, you know, run through the haunted house while they're also being chased by art. Um, you know, so that's <laughs> that's messed up and, and great. Um, Brooke's boyfriend is wearing a just the tip shirt. Art writes that on the glass and then takes the tip of a knife and shoves it through the tip of his dick. So you get a little tip to tip. Yeah. Uh, tip to tip action tip to tip action which if you watch gay porn like I do frequently you will know that's called docking porn have you ever watched docking porn Kaylee? no I have not if you haven't it's hilarious and you should <laughs> alright so when a guy takes his penis and he puts it inside another man's foreskin uh... and he has sex with his like the inside of his foreskin like a vagina oh 
that's good to know. That's information that everyone needs to I know. I definitely but that is to tip know to this. tip. Why do I feel like we've talked about this before in like some <laughs> other review, and I just blocked it from my mind, and you just brought it up again and put it back in there? I have a very odd I'm sense sure of humor. Pretty sure we have talked about this in some review. Uh, have we? I don't think I've ever mentioned docking porn. Or maybe not in a review, but like outside of a review in some capacity i don't talk about docking porn much she's making it seem like he i talk about, about it all, all the time. time i'm always trying to forget about it and then every day i wake up and he's like you're amazing <laughs> they can't hear you <laughs> it doesn't missing. matter i find that shit funny i have a weird sense of humor i also used to find the craigslist personal ads men for men like male looking for male stuff. Hilarious. I think what they're writing in there is insane and mm -hmm. just ridiculous. And it's always like a picture of some guy's butthole. <laughs> and I don't know how that's appealing, but I'm not gay, so I don't know. Uh, but it, it was very funny to contrast uh, female seeking female versus male seeking male. <laughs> and you see the difference. Of women like, when like, you take men out harder. of the equation, yeah. and you take women out of the equation, how drastic things change. Yeah. It's just le legit. It is so funny. If you, I, It's not a thing anymore, so you can't see it, but I always used to show it to people, because I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Yeah, like, the it was women like, are like, like just looking for a hole. Oh my god, And like, yeah. you know... I want, I'm looking for a blow and go. That one really put me on the floor. I thought that was the funniest shit. And if you click on them, nine times out of ten <laughs> is a guy just bending over and showing his asshole. And you're like, why? <laughs> why is this the go-to? It looks. They all look the same to me. It just look like okay, you have you have a butthole. Yeah. That's that's obvious. Don't all humans? No, maybe not. No, not all. I don't know. I haven't seen every human's butthole. We're going to move on from this. Yeah, this this review is unhinged. <laughs> I'm just going to say, contrast this it's one. It's hot in here. With our... It's <laughs> hot in here. <laughs> I, it is hot in I here. I am hot, but yeah. It does, it's compared cooking my to, brain. Compared to like our Halloween Ends <laughs> review. See though? See though? The, the tone of Halloween Ends versus the tone of this. This is making me silly. Yeah. And goofy. Yeah. And I'm having a good time. Yes, me too. And now there's going to be a campaign for people trying to get me to come out of the closet. <laughs> I'm already out, guys. I'm already all the way out. Um, all right, let's see. We've got... Um, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Docking porn. No, I didn't write that down, but I should have. Uh, Brooke gets acid in the face. Her chest is crushed in. Her... Chest cavity is exposed by her rib cage being torn apart, and her heart is ripped out of her body while still beating bullshit. And uh, Art bites into it. Yeah. Uh, Lauren drowns and screams forever. I know. Let me tell you something. She was drowned for something. a long time. Pro tip: We don't do these often. <laughs> yeah. But we should do them every video. You always want to do a pro. I tip. do want to do a pro tip. Mm -hmm. I want to do a pro tip to tip. Yeah. Docking porn style. No. Yeah, docking porn edition. Okay. This is the tip to tip, <laughs> the pro tip to tip docking porn edition uh -huh. Craigslist ad. <laughs> when you go underwater and you're completely submerged and you never come up for oxygen, you got one scream in you <laughs> and then you don't have air anymore to scream. You get the scream and when you scream, all the air leaves your lungs, right? Uh -huh. And then you can't scream again unless it's like a little, ah. Ah. But if you do like a full ah scream, right? You don't have another scream in you. It's not possible. Yeah. You don't have air. Right. She screams like seven or eight times. Yeah. Underwater. She's got big lung capacity. She's got man. a really, really big lung capacity. Uh, I don't know what this is. I don't know if the, this is just supposed to be uh, symbolism, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, she's. But in she would have drowned a thousand times before. Yeah, she's uh, in a nightmare. This. Is what sure. I think it is. So, yeah. yeah. Again, much like how Allie would not be alive. I think it's the same kind of logic that can be applied. It's dream logic. Yeah. And it is. I mean, we even ta we didn't talk about it in this, but when we were watching it, we talked about how, um, you know, when she's in the clown cafe and then her wings light on fire uh, while the woman is burning. And it's like she's bringing, you mentioned, like she's bringing the fire into the world a lot, you know, yeah, that's warriors. very, very Nightmare on Elm Street 1, actually, oh, yes. right? Yeah. She brings Freddy's hat yeah, in, or, or a piece of his sweater. Uh -huh. And then it, 
It's a piece of his sweater. Yeah, but then she brings his hat, mm. and then it's like you know she brings it up and she she gets the name and everything. Um, I need to rewatch Nightmare on Elm Street. It's been too long. Obviously, I'm like actually like thinking about it for a second, which is really weird because I know that film really well. This, anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, totally. She brings the fire of that girl who's on fire in the ukulele uh-huh. uh, into her real world and, and it sets her wings on fire. Yeah. So I, I just think, yeah, that obviously when she's drowning, like she's in a nightmare. I think that when art is around, everything is a nightmare. And I, I, like I was saying, like the reality breaking stuff that happens, um, it's it makes him a very difficult opponent. Now... It is said specifically that Art is trying to lure her to the Terrifier mm-hmm. in order to have this showdown. He has to defeat Sienna here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as I said, this is some nonsense. This is some like, I don't got anything for this one. What is special about this place? I don't and know. Why does Art... Just... This is where he... This, this is, is where, where he killed that girl. girl. That's yep. where he killed the That's pe- the connection that we have, I think, right now. Because nothing in the first movie uh, I got that nothing. I remember talks I about. Why does Sienna have of, to go but... to this? I mean, Lauren, you might be watching. Uh, you can tell us. Lauren watches the channel, and, and this is her movie. I bet she's watching this. Yes, tell what me. Is the, what is the link? She can't tell us. <laughs> she can't. She can't she's like, us. I can't because it's... She doesn't out. know. That's why. She doesn't I, know. Just like us. She's yeah. like, it's in the script. That's why. I did it because he paid me to do it. And I didn't ask questions because I want to be famous. And now you are. Congratulations. I have no explanation. I don't have an explanation either. For why he has to bring her there. Why it all has to go down there. Uh, maybe he sent the fire through her dream to try to burn her costume so that she couldn't defeat him. I don't know. I don't know. It's a cool place for a showdown, though. You know, it's he's a clown. Why wouldn't he take her to a carnival? The Terrifier. You know? Yeah. I mean, which is what Stephen King called this movie. Yes, he called it The Terrifier. The Terrifier. Which is, like, really cute. It's like that. It's the old man. It's like, yeah, the yeah. older, like, um grandpa online that's like have you guys heard about the marijuana the marijuana you guys smoking that that marijuana <laughs> leaf yeah 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 100 percent. um and then yeah uh she dies and um she comes back jonathan wakes up to art eating his hand uh because he's yeah he's into finger food Food's a little funny. Yeah, at the clown, at the clown cafe, it's hilarious. Uh, the the sword glows. <laughs> yeah. or, um, it's not like I guess it's not really a sword. I don't know what 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 you would call that. Maybe a dagger. It's it's kind of like sting. Yeah, it's like a short sword. It's Isn't that a dagger? A short sword. Sword. A sword. <laughs> May the sword be with you. May the shorts be with you. I don't know. I mean, it is a sword, but... I don't know. I don't know things. Okay? I I would like to say that the the shot I'm not a blacksmith. I'm a Jason Smith. (laughs) Your ancestors probably were blacksmiths, though. No, we're white smiths. Can't you tell? (laughs) The, The shot of Sienna... So there's that pit that is, like, surrounded by lights and just that whole scene. She falls into the Lazarus pit. I, well, I just wanted to say I, that was another scene that really stood out to me. I like the lighting and everything there, and it just is a very cinematic uh, shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she comes to get she comes alive. Her wound also like heals and glows. Yeah, this is this is nonsense. That's what I'm saying though. There's something that's <laughs> gonna happen because of that. I don't trust it. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be like the the sword is a, a link to her father and that this is like her father giving her strength from beyond the grave. But I don't trust it. And I don't trust it because if Art killed her dad and Art in any way is able to like trap the souls of the, of the victims, of his victims, you know, and, and corrupt them in some way, then maybe there is some corruption in, you know, the power that she received that will uh, manifest later in her story arc. Sure. <laughs> why not? <laughs> I'm just... Yeah, I mean, I'm why not? Thinking. I don't got anything else. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Art allows himself to be killed because he can't be killed, right? Like, what does she really accomplish? 
like the dad wasted his time drawing this shit and even having visions because she cuts his head off and then he's just reborn like two minutes later in the same asylum uh, so good job. Waste of our goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really would have liked, because uh, there was a post credit sequence and f- somehow you missed it. Uh, after Sienna cuts his head off, um, we get Vicky from the first film. Yeah. And she is in this mental institution that is being s- overseen by Chris Jericho, the wrestler, who's sitting there watching Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space. Now there is a public domain film to be watching in your movie. That's awesome. Um, but you have her giving birth mm-hmm. uh, to Art's head. Yep. And uh, Vicky's in the room singing the Clown Cafe. So she's actually like completely... Now her eye glows at the end here. Yes. So she's being possessed by the pale girl. Um, so as I said, we, I guess because Vicky killed... Uh, she's e- she's now easily possessable, or was mm. she possessed? Did she kill that girl of her own, you know, volition, or did uh, she have some influence by the pale girl? I I don't know. Um, but yeah, she's completely been taken over. Although when she writes her name up on the wall, like Art plus Vicky, it's Vicky, not the pale girl. So uh, yeah, it is. It seems to be her, but who knows? I think it's her. Um, so she gives birth to Art's head. I would have definitely liked her to give birth to Art, uh, an Art baby. Yeah, like with a full body, like a full baby body, but full, full uh, adult size Art head. Oh my god! I think that would have been even more insane looking. Yes. Just a little little art baby, but like in a little art costume. That would have been, that would have been right? crazy. And then, and then the big head. The, yes. That would, mm-hmm. have been, that would have been so great. Yeah, I would have really loved that. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Terrifier 3. Think it's happening? Yes. 100%. 100%. It's happening. Yes. It's going to happen. I mean, this, you know, this film got so much love. It's getting so much support, you know, and it hasn't even been released for very long. I don't see, you know, um, how there won't be a third installment and I'm, I'm there for it. You know, like, I think it's, it's really cool that this, uh, I know a lot of people like are (laughs) comparing or not comparing, but saying that art is this new like slasher icon and he definitely has become super iconic, um, in his short time on screen. So... I'm there for it. Yeah. I like it. I have a fun time. The first Terrifier is like a little over an hour long. The second Terrifier is like two hours and 18 minutes. So the third Terrifier is going to be Three four hours. hours long. Oh, yeah. He's just got to up it. Everything's got to just... double the runtime. Yep. Yep. We're going to get to like film six. And it's just going to be like, here is your pillow. Here's your blanket. <gasps> overnight. You're going to be, yeah, you're going to be sleeping at here theater. at the clown cafe. So, uh, in conclusion, yep. docking porn. I knew it. I knew it. I knew uh, you were going to say it. The, the hooves <laughs> trying to put together Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty's horses. Craigslist male for male ads and buttholes. Uh-huh. A lot of, yeah. lot, of, lot of fun was had here <laughs> for me. Maybe not for you. People were puking and passing out during this review. Right. As I was, yeah, they're like, as I was describing mm-hmm. all the goodness of my past homosexuality. It's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Is it though? Is it really? Well, just because you have homosexual homosexuality in the past doesn't mean it's not also in your current. That's what I'm saying. Present, yeah. Doesn't mean that it's not also, yeah. Yeah, that's I what, didn't suggest that it's gone. <laughs> All right, good. Su- yeah, I'm we need to we need page. to stop this video so I can so I can go and get to those videos that I want to watch. All We're right. done. Terrifier two. two. What did you guys think? Are you guys big fans? Uh, are you wanting a part three? And uh, let us know if uh, you know when it's dropping on Screenbox. You don't. You don't. <laughs> Unless you're Damien, Leon, or somebody who's part of the film. Fucking, I'm out of it. Yeah. I'm out of it. We need to turn the air conditioning on. Woo. All right. Well, bye.